Hey, I'm gonna show you how I created this flying glass effect in After Effects. All right, let's get started. Shoot the video without the glass and start performing the actions. And then when you're done with the actions, just wear your glass and complete the action. Bring it inside After Effects and you'll have to stitch this, that together. And once you were done with that, you will come up with this shot. By the way, you can grab all the assets that I use in this project on my Patreon page. That's also the way you can support what I do. I would really appreciate that. And first thing I have to do is drag in the asset. I'm gonna scale this down, grab the rectangle tool, rounded rectangle tool, and you can draw a rectangle, make it rounded. I'll rename this BG. Hit T to lower the opacity and I'll set it to 10. And I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call it blur. And I'm gonna convert this into an adjustment layer by clicking on this. And I'm gonna apply a Gaussian blur. Hit T and bring up the opacity to 100 again. I'm gonna crank up the blurness to around 30 or 40 depending on your taste. So I'm gonna move these two layers just below the glass layer. All right, so that's what you have. Okay, so let's just go and create a null object. I'm gonna call this controller one, controller one, and I'm gonna link all that layer to the null so that whatever we move the null, it follows. All right, so that's the setup. I'm gonna select all of this. I'm gonna color code this to one single color. Whatever you like, let's just do it red. All right, so once you're happy with that, I'm gonna duplicate the layer, move it up, and change the color code to yellow so that you can differentiate which one is which. And I'm gonna select this controller two, hit P, and I'm gonna move it sideways somewhere here. And I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna select all the yellow layers, control D to duplicate, move it up, move it up, and I'm gonna select, sorry, I have to color code this because I have to differentiate, right? So that's it. Select the controller three, hit P, and I'm gonna move it somewhere around here. So right about here, okay? So if you wanna make this a glass, liquid glass UI, I've already covered it in my previous video. Make sure to watch this video. Once you are happy with that, I can just start with the animation. So before proceeding, I will just make another null object for the controller. Controller, I'm gonna select all these controllers and parent it to the main controller. So whenever I move this, so it all moves along with that, all right? So, all right, so let's just follow the hand gesture. Somewhere around here, it starts to swipe. So I'm gonna position this, I'm gonna start here. So set a keyframe for the position. So it slides it there and I'm gonna move it here and I'll start it from here so I'll set a blank keyframe and there so right there you have to move this here if you play back now all right so that's really really boring so I will add an expression so in order to do that you'll have to apply an expression to this holding down alt and you know pasting the expression here and it's really a mess sometimes. So I created a script called expression kit and here you can save any expression and, and it also comes with some, you know, preloaded expressions here. So I have the bounce expression, which is default here. So I will select the bounce expression here and I'll show you how this uh, script works. I'm gonna select the position here and select the expression that I want from this dropdown and I can just apply the expression. So Exp expression applied successfully, all right? So hit okay. And you can see that expression has been applied. So you don't have to go and hold down all and click on the stopwatch. And you know, it, it really makes the workflow a bit faster and simpler, okay? So if I play back now, you can see that it's really, really nice. So not only this, you, you have other examples here. So I will just sh uh, show you the functionality of this uh, expression kit light. So here I have a simple bouncing ball. All right, so 
I select the property, which is the position. So I'll select the bouncing ball. And if I hit this apply expression, and it has applied the expression. If I play back now, you can see that. That's really, really cool. So that's a preloaded expression. I'll show you another example here. So in the position property, I will just go and apply this floating layer. And if I apply the expression, and you know, the expression has been applied. So the final example that I want to show you here is, let's say if you want to scale the rectangle from the right side and while still maintaining the rounded curve here, it's really, really not possible with this. So if you go inside this rectangle and uncheck this constraint proportion, and if you scale it now, it scales right from the center. So that's not, there's no way you can, you know, change the anchor point of this. So the only way you have is you have, so if you go down here, you have a transform rectangle. Right now, if you select the pen behind tool and move the anchor point to the right side, and if you start scaling, it scales from the right side, but the problem here is the rounded curve is not round anymore. It's a little bit distorted here. You can see that it's not really, really responsive here. So that's not what we want here. I want to still maintain the roundness of this rectangle, right? So that's where this expression comes. So the way how you can use this expression is you can just collapse this rectangle and the transform, which is inside this content, not this one, it's inside the contents. Go to the transform and select the anchor point. And if you select this top right, which is here, select this and apply expression. It will move that and can you can just center it again by using the align. And now if you go to the size of this rectangle, if you scale it now, you can see that you still have the rounded corners maintain right so you can see that it's really really cool you have some other anchor points top left bottom right bottom left all right so you can use this it's these are all all you know a preloaded expression which is really really nice and apart from that say for example i have an expression here okay so let's just copy the expression and let's go here and i'm going to delete all this i'm going to paste the expression here all right let's just give a name okay so if you save that you can click on here and you have this here, all right? So you don't have to save the expressions in a document or you can just, you know, it's really, really uh, nice to have. If you are a paid Patreon member, you already have access to this. If you haven't checked that out, go sign into your Patreon and you will have a link to download this script. And if you're not a paid Patreon member, this is a way you can support what I do. And apart from this script, you'll get access to tons of uh, templates and also my course Beyond Premiere, A Beginner's Guide to After Effects. That is also accessible for my Motion Pro tier members. Become a paid Patreon member and I would really, really appreciate that. All right, let's go back to the tutorial. All right, let's go back to the main comp. So right here, I'll have to drag in the class footage which is this i'm gonna drag and drop it so let's scale it down and just grab the rectangle tool while selecting on the glass layer just throw a mask so what i'm gonna do is apply a key light to remove the green screen just to pick a color here and you can just adjust the screen mat click on this pen behind tool and move this center anchor point to somewhere around here okay so let's go and you know, slide it here. I'm going to right click, time, enable time remapping, and I'm going to stretch this so that we have a steel frame here. And I'm going to align this to the, the other glass, okay? By hitting S for scale, Shift and R for rotation, Shift and P for position. So I'm going to scale it down and, you know, rotate it. So I'm going to adjust it move it to the position here and I'm going to scale it up. You can see some black patches here. So we're going to work on that later on. You can just refine your key light effect. I mean, so I'm going to adjust this. And once you're happy with that, so right after the hand gesture, when I select the glass, 
I'm gonna start the animation. So here, so I will just hit Shift and U to bring up the keyframes here. I'm gonna move this here instead, okay? Here, you can see the footage there. When the class is on, we want the position scale rotation to end, okay? So it's gonna start from here. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the position scale rotation and maybe a here and I'm gonna scale it up something like that and it will going back like that so right here so at the ending animation which is this I want to you know align this so first of all I will just turn this off the this one because we don't need that anymore so right at here I want this to align with the the glass that I'm wearing okay so I will just adjust that with the help of this time remapping okay so something like this and I will just adjust it with the position and maybe scale it down a touch and maybe even the rotation something like this and something like that so it's going there Bam. Right after that, I will trim that off. Trim the glass layer. Alt and the right square bracket. Something like that. Okay, so I'll select all of this. F9 for easy ease. And I'm going to adjust the graph to something like this. So right there, I'll just leave that for now. And I will just animate out the background. Okay, the glass effect. So hit U for the controller. And somewhere around... Right after I click that, I will just set a keyframe for the position and move it down here and, you know, just move it down like that, okay? So right after it here, right at this position, so right now, it this is not linked to it. So let me just reposition it so that we have it in the center. Make sure you, you are at this keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent this to the controller 3 so that this goes along with it, okay? So we still have a problem here because right now it's going down along with the main controller. So the way how you can fix that is at this keyframe, you can split this glass layer, control shift and D, and the other half, you just parent it to none so that after that we need just that like that okay i hope you learned something from this make sure to check out the expression kit light on my patreon page i would really appreciate that this is motion designer and i will see you in my next video take care